guys, this is Sandy Tepper. I'm back again with another video for you guys. Uh, this is Aaron Sheehan, and uh, let him introduce himself in a sec. Uh, I just wanted to say first off that we're doing these videos for you, and hopefully you guys are getting something out of it. Um, today we're going to be talking about pre and post emergent weed control, um, fungicide, and anything else that comes up along the way. So Aaron, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your, your business and what you do. Well, I'm Aaron Sheehan. I have a, a company called Rolon and it's based out of South Fort Worth. Um, I started the company in 1997. Uh, started off like a lot of people, just with a lawnmower in the back of their pickup truck. Um, while I was doing that, I was going to school at Tarrant County Junior College, was at, at the time called Junior College, now it's Tarrant County College, but I went through the, the horticulture program there. Um, and then just have you know, continued education through the University of Georgia and then uh, of course continued education through like Texas A&M There's regular CEU classes for my license, which all applicators do that. Just I'm not I'm not trying to make it out like yeah. I graduated from a and I did not. Yeah, we but, wish we wish you could we could get uh, some of the applicators some yeah, uh, pull yeah. credits for these videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I've been in business a while um, I was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I got to the South as soon as I could uh, when I was four. Moved to Florida, grew up as a, as a kid in Florida. Uh, moved here in high school, went to Western Hills High School. Uh, and then I've been in, in the area ever since. I, I live in Burleson, Texas. My company services Tarrant County, uh, Burleson, uh, which is in Johnson, and then Joshua is Johnson County. And then we also do parts of Parker, which are Weatherford and Alita. Very good. So, and before we get into the weeds of this, pun intended, um, how many acres, how many customers, um, employees, what, what does your company look like structure-wise? Okay, so we, we, almost, we do almost about 2,000 customers a year. Wow. Um, we have four full-time lawn care trucks on route every day, and then we have one mosquito route truck. And then we also do Arbor Jet injections, but... That's it. We just started doing that, so that's really not a full time thing for us right now. But that's what our um, that's what our, what we're doing now. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then so what, what I do on a day to day basis is I go out and look at our customers' yards, our potential customers, and that's basically what I do every every day, that's good. all week long. I, I'm looking at yards and diagnosing diagnosing yards. Very nice. So how many uh, licensed applicators do you have under you? you there four, would four be trucks. five. Okay. Five. So we have four that, are, that have the TDA license, and then when one, our mosquito technician has their structural, mm -hmm. and then I have another lawn care technician that has both, that oh, has good. a TDA and a structural. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Aaron comments a lot. He gives a lot of advice out in the group, and, you know, just as far as his background goes, you know, being a licensed applicator for over 20 years, you know, that's experience that you've pretty much seen as much as you could see in this area. Um, and, you know, we have at least five that I can think of off the top of my head that are licensed applicators, probably closer to 10. You know, it's just the way that the group is growing, we're getting a lot more knowledge into the group and you know it's really helping out some of the beginners uh some of the intermediate people and some of the people that think they know things like me so you know i i learn from these guys you know i default to them when they say something i pay attention when they're saying it and you know then i'm able to help out somebody else so um let's start talking about uh what you came here to talk about which is weed control so uh, this we're in September. So um, some people, I mean, I'm further north. I'm putting out rye, so I didn't put out pre-emergent. But right. um, why is it important to put out pre-emergent? Um, why can't you just kill off the weeds with a post-emergent? Well, you definitely could kill off weeds with a post-emergent, but there's nothing to keep them from coming back the very next week. So you want to get a pre, like for instance, fall, you're putting that this fall pre-emergent to control your broadleaf weeds that are going to be, when the, when the temperatures get cooler, you're going to get broadleaf weeds. You're also going to start to see pulla and rescue germinate. And if you want to keep those out of your yard 
in the in the, in January and February, it's not when you're when you're going to see them. Right. But you got to get that those kind of pre-emergents out now. Uh, now that like really is like, we're getting kind of late yeah. to be putting out your pre-emergent, and it depends on what you're using too, um, and what in combinations of your pre-emergents because with fall pre-emergent in, in at least the Dallas Fort Worth area. Timing of it, of course, timing is, let me back up. Timing is important no matter where you are. Right. But the products that you're, we're putting out now are very important. Like, for example, some of them aren't as effective as they used to be. Mm -hmm. Pen, uh, pendomethalin being one of them. So pendomethalin, I'm, I'm not sure why that's even still, or people are still putting it out, because it just doesn't work as good as it used to. It used to be the number one pre-emergent that people would use for crabgrass 20 years ago. Um, but as barricade, well, that's, kinda, that's how they marketed it, right? Mm -hmm. It was Halt's crabgrass or Halt's stocks crabgrass yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and now the university studies are showing that you're only going to get somewhere around 70% control. And is that, for a lawn care company, that's not nowhere, that's not where near good enough. I mean, for a, for a residential homeowner, that may be good enough. And if you have some quinclorac or something and mm -hmm. you want to clean it up with that, that may be good enough for you. But for a lawn care app applicator, we that's not good enough for us our customers would just be well know. yeah i mean they're going to be upset plus you're always going to be fighting weeds and it's not cost effective mm -hmm. so if you can prevent them rather than spending a ton of money on tribute total or something that can knock out whatever you need to or combinations of different mm -hmm. herbicides it's it's not as cost effective for you for running a business yeah um from what i've seen as far as poa goes in the last couple of years We've had very mild winters, so it's showing up earlier, yeah. and it's staying later. Yep. So, um, I mean, this, the fall pre-emergent to, to control POA is really, really important. And last year, like you said, rescue grass was horrible last yeah. year. It was everywhere. So, um, that would be, would be fall. Now, I think what you said was also important because at least from what I've seen as far as a couple of posts go, it's like, you know, I just put out my pre-emergent, why am I seeing weeds? So the pre-emergent that you're putting down now is going to prevent future weeds. Right. Right? So so, so in the fall, you if you're just gonna use a granular product, I would recommend that you get out way early and not don't try to time the, the cool weather that we got like a week ago. Yeah. I, I would recommend that you put it out around August 15th just because just to, to get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be scorching hot August 15th in the area. Get your granular pre em out then, and then again in, in uh, two months after that, and so do a split application of whatever you want. Uh, uh, maybe not, maybe, maybe not pentamethylene. Yeah. And then expect to spot treat weeds because that time of year in August 15th, you're going to have spurge, mm -hmm. you might have some thistle here and there. And you're, it's not going to be perfect, so expect to be spot treating weeds. A, a pre-emergent, you should expect to be putting out some post-emergent with it. Right. But if you if you if you get it out ahead of time, you should you should be using very little post-emergent. So the big ones that we're going to see, and you know, you see it in the winter especially because most of the lawns are dormant. Mm -hmm. So anything that is green, you you see, and you have to control with a post-emergent. Yeah. Um, what are we seeing? And what products can we use in Bermuda, St. Augustine, Zoysia that would be safe for those types of grasses? Because obviously there's not products that you use on Bermuda, you might not necessarily be able to use on another type of grass. So yeah. what are we seeing and what can we use? Well, I can tell you that we use certainty in the in the like January, February, March to control rescue and polo. Mm -hmm. On uh, and that's you can use that on either one. If you're if you're just doing um bermuda grass you have a wide range yeah. and i i know i'm almost literally to say that you, you glyphosate on the grass yeah. i mean <laughs> i really be careful with that because your grass has to be totally dormant but is this the best way to do it mm -hmm. um we don't do it on our in our business i do it on my home lawn but uh anyway well so <laughs> tribute total is a good one monument's a good one uh, Revolver is a good one for cleaning up all these uh, cool season grassy weeds. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the broadleaf weeds go, uh, it depends on the temperature. You could use like a regular, uh, like a three-way product, like, like for example, Lesco three-way. That's good for when we start getting into March, 
and the temperatures are, are uh, let's say, in the 60s and 70s during the day? Yeah, it's weird because it has to be below 85 where you can scorch your lawn, but it mm -hmm. has to be above, like, 55, 60. Yep. Even, even I mean, not that, because you, you said it, not that we're recommending using glyphosate, but even glyphosate doesn't work when it's too cool out. So well, it works if it's actively growing. If, like, you're right, though. If it's 20 degrees outside that day and the, the, the plants are shutting down, the, you're not, the glyphosate's mm -hmm. not going to work. Right. So I, I think that's interesting about 240D is it's just like you have this small window of temperatures where mm -hmm. you can use it. Um, so use certainty, which can, you can use on both. On both, and you can use that on zoysia too. Mm -hmm. What about um, broadleaf weeds in St. Augustine? You gotta be careful. Um, I, if it's in this early spring before April 15th, atrazine, mm -hmm. atrazine, it's, it's cheap, it works great. It's gonna, it's gonna clean up some of your POA. It used to do a really good job on POA, like 10, 15 years ago. You could, you could put your atrazine in January, February and clean up all your POA and rescue. That's not true today. It just, it's, um, the POA and rescue are becoming more and more resistant and crabgrass too. Yeah. Um, but atrazine on St. Augustine, I mean, it's really, it's a really great part. We use it for our St. Augustine broadly we control. Um, you want to be careful with the, the, like, the, I, don't, I don't, I don't put a lot of 2,4-D on St. Augustine. There's some products that are labeled for it. I don't like to use it at all. Um, Celsius is a good one to mm -hmm. use on your St. Augustine. It's very gentle. Um, so those are two products that you can use okay. on, on your St. Augustine. So keep those in your arsenal. You know, some of these products are expensive. You, you mentioned Tributol. Um, I was able to get some rescue grass from, uh, not rescue, but Revolver from somebody in the group. Um, people have been splitting. There was another split of Revolver. So, you know, this stuff is expensive. A lot of us, I mean, I have probably 3,000 square feet total. You know, it would take me 10 years to go through a bottle of some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these, these splits should really, really help you guys. Um, I would keep trying to do it. You know, these, these products are, are really, really good. And they're really helpful for anybody. And, you know, if you're, you're using something on St. Augustine, like you were just saying, you're pretty limited on what you can use. So you kind of have to keep Celsius and certainty on your shelf. Yeah. Um, so poa, rescue grass, some broadleaf weeds that pop up in the, in the early spring, nothing crazy. Um, as the Bermuda, St. Augustine doesn't really go fully dormant, right? right? So as everything's starting to green up and come back, um, you have to be a little bit careful about your herbicides mm -hmm. because everything's trying to come back. It's storing all that energy. It's using all that energy, but you're knocking it down with some herbicides. So probably be a little bit careful there. Yeah, I like. We don't want to put. We don't put any 2,4-D on the on the Saint Augustine because if you can, the leaf of a Saint Augustine bladel grass is very wide, so it catches a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so it's and I don't like it. So yeah, just I. For us, we try to do atrazine in the spring, and then that's it, if we could get away with it. And if we have to use a three-way product of whatever you want, we, it's, it's a spot treatment only. Mm -hmm. to Just to try to re reduce the amount of herbicides on St. Augustine, because we're growing St. Augustine, and more north for you than me, at the, one of the northernmost points where it grows. And so St. Augustine doesn't like to go dormant, as you, as you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it always goes dormant last. And if you get into these really cold winters, it's, you know, it's hard on St. Augustine. And then when it's coming out of dormancy, and then you just went the year before with a bunch of water restrictions mm -hmm. and your yards are all stressed out and then they're now they're coming out, you know, you, we really want to go easy on the, on the herbicides and uh, focus on getting those weeds prevented when the grass is dormant because you, you can use harsher, I say harsher chemicals. You can go harder at the weeds when the grass is dormant, and that's that's your window for getting after those those spring weeds is when your uh, your St. Augustine is dormant. Yeah. Once it starts coming out, you really got to be really gentle with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I find that pretty interesting because, you know, if if you just think about it logically, the grass is trying to do something, and then you're trying to prevent something, or you're trying to kill something else, but the grass is still gonna absorb yeah. what you're trying to kill, whether it, because it's just, it's, the weed is just surrounding the grass. Yep. So, you know, the, those spot treatments have to be 
and you know don't linger on that trigger for too long yeah. when you spot treating. Yeah. Um, but they have to be very gentle at that time. Um, it says it on a label all the time not to apply to stressed lawns or yep. anything like that. So, you know, we've talked about that before. Always follow follow the label. It's there for a reason. So just be aware of that. Um, okay, so now we're into spring. We have our pre-emergent down for the spring. Um, you said about August 15th if you're using a granular for your fall pre-emergent coming back two months later. What about in the spring? So it, it depends. And I, we, as turf managers, we always maybe should start every sentence with it depends. Right. But um, so for us, we use, we use spectacle as our pre-emergent and we, we, we're, we're going to get 16 ounces per acre throughout the starting in the fall and then going through the, uh, the spring. And our goal to have that out is by, um, well, before still temperature gets 55, mm -hmm. but um, February, or March 31st is our window uh, from January to March 31st to get out. Well, I'll mean back up from fall to March 31st is we're putting out the 16 ounces per acre of spectacle. And that gives us really good control of a lot of weeds. You know, and we can get it out at that time. We're not, we, we're, we don't use a lot of post emergence except for nut sedge. Yeah. Right? You're not going to prevent nut sedge. <laughs> and so, you know, we're, we're hitting the, the nut sedge at that time of year. But if you get your pre emergent out at the right time, you really don't have to spend a lot of money on post emergent. I, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, I mean, it's just about, I guess, timing on when you should be getting your spring, emer spring pre emergent out. Um, only because you mentioned yeah. a potential target date of August 15th for your fall, coming back two months later. Um, well, definitely before soil temperature hits 55, mm -hmm. and that's sometime in either late March or sometime in mid-April, there's your window of when temperatures are gonna hit, soil temperature hits 55, not, not outside temperature, soil mm -hmm. temperature, that's when crabgrass is gonna start to germinate. So you wanna get it out, um, whether it's barricade or spectacle or your pendomethylene, or whatever products you choose, you want to get it out before that. If you if you're late, you want to go with your dimension, your mm -hmm. dithia pier, because that has the a post emergent effect on your crabgrass, and you want to go at the high rate. Right. So at that time, if you are late, let's say you're at your April fifteenth or so, and you know you're late, you don't want to do a split app right there. You just you want to put all your dimension out at one time in case you did have some breakthrough, and then um, but with dimension, you're not going to get you're yeah. not going to get season-long control. Right, yeah, that doesn't last all that long, no, it even last. with the max rate. Yeah. Um, now, just keep in mind, we are in DFW, so these target dates will change the further south you go. Um, you know, I'm further north in DFW, so it varies slightly, but just keep that in mind, that as you get further south, you know, there are some areas, um, Ray Freeman, he's down south of Houston on the coast, and this St. Augustine doesn't even go dormant yeah. at all. It was green all last winter. So, um, you know, just keep in mind as far as your pre-emergent goes. And the further south you go, you have to make sure that you have year-long coverage of your pre-emergent because your soil temperatures are never going to get below. below. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's a struggle in itself. Mm -hmm. um, aside from crabgrass, and, okay, so I guess we'll talk about nut sedge because okay. I brought that up. So, nut sedge for Bermuda, St. Augustine, Zoysia. Zoysia and Bermuda, for the most part, as far as what I know, um, you can use a lot of the same products for. Mm -hmm. um, but for St. Augustine, it... it you can't it, use tribute total on right, St. Augustine. Right, so a lot of things change for St. Augustine. So, aside from certainty, you know, what else can you use that's safe on St. Augustine to control nut sedge? Sedge hammer is probably going to be a very common one. Katana, Solero, those are, those are going to be your heavy hitters. Probably sedge, sedge hammer is probably the most common one. Mm -hmm. We I like it. We use it. Yeah. I, I We use the most of certainty though mm -hmm. because I, cause I can, if I go at two ounces an acre, I can just do one application and be done. The thing about with nut sets, though, is expect it to take a while. Yeah. I mean, you, you spray your, your nut sedge with certainty, and you're out there in your week four, and you're going, man, my, my nut sedge still doesn't even look like I treated it. Well, week five and six is when you're going to see it go away. Yeah. The sedge hammer is going to be a lot quicker, but I feel like certainty just, I 
feel like Certainty is a little is just a little bit better for it, but both work great. I used Certainty this year. Last year I used Dismiss, which was very very quick. Um, mm -hmm. This year I used Certainty with um, some MSO methylated seed oil, and that also worked really well. Um, so MSO. So let's talk about. Um, surfactants and okay. adjuvants. Yeah, so you, you have you, basically your two options. You have methylated seed oil, which is MSO, or you have like a, a spreader sticker surfactant. And the, the differences of those would be a surfactant, it just helps the, the herbicide stick to the plant. That's all it does is it sticks to it and it holds it there. A methylated seed oil is a penetrant. So when you spray the plant, and uh, like for example, like crabgrass or something like that, and you're using you like let's say tribute total or manuscript or something like that, you're gonna want to use a methylated seed oil type product to help penetrate that weed because a lot of times it's, it's you need more than just holding the product on the plant. Mm -hmm. You really need to penetrate it. Um, and another example of a product that, that's a more of a penetrator is like a three-way ester. Mm -hmm. so you would use that in like January, February in the Dallas Fort Worth area when it's cold. Right. Um, you use a three-way ester because it penetrates the plant. It's high in salt. And so you're, you're going to get a very good weed control versus if you were to use something like a Lesco three-way in January in Dallas Fort Worth. Yes. When it's cold, it's probably not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think adding some of those things, you know, somebody would say, you know, I I don't want to say nuts edge because it does take a while to kill nuts edge, but I sprayed my crabgrass and nothing's happening. You know, why isn't anything happening? Well, did you add anything to it? And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's it's not getting too advanced by adding some of these things. Your first step, in my opinion, is getting out of Home Depot and Lowe's and getting some of these products because those products that are at Home Depot and Lowe's are very low in active ingredients. I don't like the ready to spray at all because mm -hmm. you just have no idea how much you're putting out at any point. And we have almost 5,000 members, so to split some products with somebody, to learn how to use a sprayer, it's, it's spraying, especially blanket spraying, is not any more difficult than using a spreader. Right. I mean, I'm not trying to dumb down what you guys do as far as being a pro applicator, but that's, you know, it, is that something that they, they go over with you when you're, or not even go over, is that something that's even on the test? Oh yeah, calibration mm -hmm. is a big part of the test. Yeah. And if you fail it, you're not gonna get your license, okay. uh, for sure. Um, I'm doing a, not to plug my, uh, my YouTube channel, but I, 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 I do recognize that that, in, in our DIY market, there's maybe some confusion. And so I did, I'm doing a test right now, manuscript versus tribute total. And I mix the products up on like in the video from, from, from starting with water and putting the product in and applying it and all that. So, um, because I see, I see the comments that let's say talk about MSM. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you post something, I, I challenge people to post something about MSM and then watch the comments of what, of what people say about how much to use of it, and if it doesn't scare you to death, it yeah. should absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're you're gonna need some activated charcoal if you use a little too much. <laughs> yeah, of that. yeah, you're gonna have some dead trees. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and uh, not not to de attack MSN too much because I know I'm gonna get some some hate on this. It's a very effective product. Let me just say that it's a very effective product. But in the Dallas Fort Worth area, where our soil pH is many times over eight. The label clearly says, no, don't apply it. It's a full pH over 7.9. And the likelihood of you having that is very high. Yeah. And, it, if you, and if that's the case, it's going to be in your soil for three years. Yeah, I think that that's something that, you know, as you, as you get more advanced and as you, as a DIYer, as you get more into this stuff, they're, you know, adding something like an MSO or a surfactant to your, um, to your spraying, is a good thing, um, like I said, getting the first step of, of getting into these products would be learning how to use a sprayer. So I guess since we touched on that, um, let's talk about calibrating a sprayer. Yeah, so the, the best way is um, fill your sprayer up to one gallon, or two, two gallons doesn't matter. Um, we use battery powered sprayers, but this, this is, applies to hand pump sprayers too. 
mark out a, a, a thousand square feet on your driveway and go spray it and then measure how much you get out of a gallon and then so you're going to have that and then go do that in your yard so let's say you just going to use water to start and let's say you have a Bermuda St. Augustine yard doesn't matter go spray the same area and then but but wet the plant the, the lawn like you were spraying a weed and then compare to see what kind of square footage you get and I promise you, whenever you're spraying weeds, you're going to get a lot less square footage out of it. Because when you're spraying your driveway, you're just mm -hmm. doing this back and forth. But when you're actively spot treating weeds, you go a lot slower. And you need to go a lot slower because you, uh, need, to, you need to spray the plant to wet, but not dripping off. Right. And so spray your grass like that, measure the area, and then now you know how much a gallon will do. And then there, there you go. Now you know how much to put in your, when you're one gallon sprayer, when you're spot treating. But you have to calibrate your piece of equipment to your style of spraying. Right, and I think that's what people get confused with calibrating is. Mm -hmm. is it, and it's exactly what you said. It's, you're calibrating yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a funny way to do it, but how fast are you walking? How slow are you walking? Yeah. Are you doing crazy things with your hand? Mm -hmm. you know? That's what you're, you're calibrating when you're spraying weeds. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, neither one of us are over six feet tall. Mm -hmm. So my pace and your pace are going to be very similar. But, uh, but if I have a technician that's six five and I say, walk a normal pace, well, he's going to take a step that's <laughs> twice as ours, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's and true. so, yeah, you have to calibrate each. And we, we do this in our, in our businesses. We, do, we just do what I just told you. We mark out, we have a thousand square feet marked off in our shop mm -hmm. with tape. And we all spray it on a lot of days, like when it's raining and stuff, we'll do this and then we'll go out and um, behind our shop and it's like, Hey, let's spray here. And we we're like, ah, you know, yeah, it's and so we have to calibrate that. And, um, they're all a little different. And, and one thing I see with the new, new applicators is they, they get like a 200 gallon sprayer and, and, uh, you know, from whatever dealer and, you know, they, they say to spray two gallons a minute. Okay, and your tank should do 100,000 square feet a day. Well, that's, that's true if you maintain a walking speed of like three miles an mm -hmm. hour. If you can do those two things, yes, your tank will do 100,000 square feet. But um, you, you should, as a, as a professional applicator, you should take, let's say you treat 20 properties in a day, take your square footages and then compare what you used compare to what you should have used mm -hmm. and then dial it in that way. And then, so that that's how you can get really close because you can be you can be easily twenty percent off. Yeah, I mean, if you're just putting out spectacle, you better be dialed in. I was going to say you're wasting money. <laughs> yeah, if you're not dialed yeah. in, yeah, that's the biggest thing, especially you know running four trucks and you know you got to make sure that yeah. Um. Okay, spraying weeds. I think we covered everything as far as that goes. If anybody has any weed comments or either pre or post emergent. Anything like that, um, you know, always ask. So let's shift towards fungus, okay? Because um, it's September, DFW, um, Houston area just got slammed. Somebody just got 12 inches of rain the other day. Um, there's a lot more St. Augustine down south, oh, yeah. but there's plenty up here. So St. Augustine and fungus, what should you be doing? Um, and when should you be doing it? Should you just treat it post-emergently. You can, so you can do a curative rate of fungicide or you can do preventative with, in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, this, well, this applies to any kind of St. Augustine lawn. You have to know your weather, your weather, and then, but for us, uh, uh, September 1st would be a good target date for a preventative brown patch control. October 1st would be another target date. November 1st, it depends, right? It's for every sentence with, it depends. Mm -hmm. Because you can be deer hunting in November in a t-shirt and, and, and get yeah. eaten up by mosquitoes. And in that situation, yeah, you would want to do another St. Augustine brown patch preventer. But if it's cold, then no. Because your window for brown patch is like temperatures in the 80s during the day and then somewhere in the mid 60s at night, cloudy, overcast weather. Those are conditions favorable for brown patch. And so if you get ahead of that with like say a heritage, um, in October, you could probably switch to propiconazole because the temperature is usually mm -hmm. a little cooler. Um, get it get it out before then. So it's September 1st and then October 1st would be good target dates 
And then you, November 1st, you just have to kind of like, just have to play it by ear, depending on our weather. Heritage meaning Zoxystrophe. Yeah, Zoxystrophe, yeah, Heritage, yeah. Just for... Or Headway, Headway's a good mm -hmm. one. That's just a combination of yeah. Propiconazole and uh, Zoxystrophe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the two big ones that, uh, that people use, Group 3, Group 11, um, from what I've seen. You can get into Group 1s, but I don't really see too much use of other products as far as fungus control. Um, I don't know if you know why, or if they're just not as accessible or not as useful. I just, I just think the other, the, the, those, the Heritage and the, uh, the Exoxystrobin and the uh, Propaganzal are just work the best. Yeah. Um, just go go online and go to, to like university studies uh, and, and research what's ones they recommend and the, the, the studies that they have that they've done and then you know have a lawn care company for 20 years and use them use them all and see which ones work yeah. which ones don't yeah, that's true and there's a reason why I use propconazole and exoxystrobin is because they, they they work the best um, some of the other stuff that we've used in the past are like Cleary um, I, I have, personally I haven't had a lot of Good luck with it. Um, that's a group one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th that's just my experience, and I, maybe I gave up on it too soon. But I, I already know that these work, and mm -hmm. um, don't fix it. Don't fix it if it's not broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there, in, in in our area, there's two kinds of St. Augustine lawns. There's ones with brown patch, and there's ones that are going to get it. So if you get it, don't panic. Um, just do something about it, and uh, and you should be okay. Yeah, it seems like, you know, and this is just from my limited experience, that it, it's <clears> one of those that, sure, it's ugly to look at, but it is, you can't fix that. Something like Take All Root Rot, which you did a video on not mm -hmm. long ago, is a little bit more serious. So, when would you be seeing that? And, you know, obviously, go, go watch the video. We'll talk about your YouTube at the mm -hmm. end and all that. But, um, what would you use and... Can that be fixed? Yeah, this is this is putting a out some good new subject soil. to talk about. Take out root rot because it, it is can it can do damage to any kind of warm season or cool season grass in our area, but it's most problematic on St. Augustine. And so recently, the, the the soil temperature conditions are now favorable for brown patch. So whenever you go through a hard summer, when we all do in mm -hmm. Dallas Fort Worth, we're on water restrictions and. The, our customers' yards or our personal yards get drought stressed, and then you get periods like we're in now where it's overcast and uh, we get a little bit of rain, and then it rains at night for days on end. <clears throat> Those are conditions that are favorable for brown patch, and you, <clears throat> you might see some yellowing in the fall, and a lot of people just don't just think it's you know the, the regular what's 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 happening with the lawn, mm -hmm. and it could very well be take all root rot. And when the, you know, then we go dormant, and then in the following spring, when the grass is coming out of dormancy, you start to see a, really, a lot of yellowing and some dead patches, some dead patches that are not coming back. I mean, that's why it's called take all root rot because it takes all the grass that it's affecting and kills it. So what you can do about it is get, is get your soil pH right. So in Dallas Fort Worth, we're a very high pH soils. Get a soil test. Get your soil pH somewhere around six point five. Because the takeoff root rot can't survive at 6.7 or higher. So if you just manage that, you can go a long way with control and takeoff root rot. Getting cultural practice correct, not letting your yard get super stressed out in the, in the, in the summer. Applying peat moss is a good way to, to lower your pH and then your grass is going to love it. You're going to get some, a green response just from doing that. And then ele elemental sulfur. Uh, applying elemental sulfur... Uh, probably several years mm -hmm. to get your pH because it takes a lot. And you can't, it's not one of those products that you can use all year round. You will burn the crap out of your lawn if you yeah. use it in the summer. Yeah. So you're kind of limited on when you can use it. So mm -hmm. I mean, if you could use it, you know, once a month, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. But it takes a while to break down. And yeah, you're talking long. three or four months for it to completely break down. Yeah. So spring and fall, really? Yeah, I like to do a cure, like if I'm gonna do a curative program with somebody, let, let's say for example, they have take all root rot, I do a soil test and it comes out of it, I actually did one recently, a 7.9 pH. I'm gonna put out 20 pounds per thousand of elemental sulfur in December. And then I have, so I have that window of like a three to four month window where I don't have to worry about burning the grass. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna do that for, for this particular client three years in a row. 
and that should get me to somewhere below or somewhere near 6.5. Once I get to 6.5, it's not gonna stay there. No. We got so much limestone in our mm -hmm. soil, it's gonna wanna keep creeping up, creep, mm -hmm. creeping up, but that'll, that'll help go a long way with the uh, take all root rot and applying the fungicides too. They're, they're very helpful, but a lot of the fungicides that are labeled for take all root rot don't, aren't really that effective. Yeah. The most effective practice is getting your soil pH right with peat moss, with um, elemental sulfur, and then you re you know you recommend citric acid. You you know probably be standing out after you apply the citric citric acid. You need to have your finger on the water button. Mm -hmm, that's for damn sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, somebody told me that on the lawn forum a long time ago, and that that's something. It's not it's not only good for your pH, but it'll help um, unlock some of those nutrients that get yeah. locked up, like iron. Yeah, and it can act as a as a chelating product. So I think I think that can help, but it's not going to do the same thing that elemental sulfur does. Mm -hmm. um, so you know th those are the, the two big things. Um, Bermuda, you know, we talked about this a little bit before, but what kind of should you be using the same type of program, fungus program for Bermuda that you do St. Augustine? Or, or, and we can talk about zoysia too, because that's somewhere in the middle. But, yeah. but let's talk about Bermuda first. So in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it's not impossible for your Bermuda to get uh, a fungus. But if you do, you should play, play the lottery that week. <laughs> <laughs> because the likelihood of you having a disease on your Bermuda grass in Dallas-Fort Worth and again, this is probably comments are gonna fill up for this, but it's probably the most misdiagnosed um, lawn problem June through September 1st is fungus. And, and, and so here's the criteria that you would need to get a fungus in the summertime. You would need to have an enormous amount of rain, like I'm talking seven to 10 days of just rain, humidity, and overcast conditions in the middle of the summer and then you have the potential for disease doesn't mean you're going to get it mm -hmm. but those are the conditions that you would need so if, if if those conditions aren't happening your likelihood you don't have a disease like if you're in water restrictions and you're a regular homeowner and you're watering twice a week and you're seeing spots in your yard it usually means water more mm -hmm. usually yeah um, but if your if your water bill is more than your mortgage payment <laughs> you might you might have a fungus then <laughs> but you have to ha it has to be an enormous amount and even e even in the spring and fall with Bermuda grass you might see we talked about this earlier mm -hmm. you might see a little gray leaf spot but it's pretty temporary you, you, you could probably just cut back on your water put some potassium down but putting out uh, uh, the, what's the brand everybody's putting out? I don't even. Scott's. Scott's um, Disease X. Yeah. yeah. Don't, I mean, save your money. Yeah. yeah. You're not, it's, it's a lot. It's, fungicides are very expensive. And ask any golf course superintendent <laughs> how much fungicide they keep for their fairways. <laughs> and they're going to say zero. Yeah. And just, uh, there's not a problem. Um, other parts of the country, it may, it may be a problem, but. It still is very unlikely. I mean, Bermuda grass has its own defense me mechanisms when it comes to disease, a lot stronger than than uh, Saint Augustine and Zoysia. But Saint Augustine this year is the one that keeps the turf managers up at night in the Dallas Fort Worth area with disease. Yeah. That's the grass that keeps you up at night. It's not Bermuda grass for sure. That's easy. But Zoysia does get these these other funguses like brown patch. So mm -hmm. if you have Zoysia grass, then yeah, you need to be on the same a similar uh, fungicide prevention program as you would St. Augustine because it is more susceptible to the br uh, brown patch. It gets brown patch. Um, it gets take all root rot. It gets gray leaf spot and those, those things, but probably more susceptible to brown patch in our area. Mm -hmm. And yeah, September 1st, October 1st, and you should be okay. I think you brought up something and it was a little brief, but I want to just make sure that it's, it's clear that for fungus, conditions have to be favorable to have to for the potential to get fungus yeah so I think that that's really important I don't want to just pass over that that you, if you're in the middle of the summer and it's a hundred degrees for 30 days your chances of getting fungus on any grass 
It's pretty slim. Yeah, you, so in, 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 with all the funguses, you need a lot of moisture. Mm -hmm. So if that's not one of the conditions, then you can, you can eliminate fungus as being one of your problems. Okay. So you also have um, a, a mosquito part of your business. Mm -hmm. So insecticides. So if it's not fungus, my, my lawn's turning brown. If it's not fungus, okay. especially St. Augustine, not, you guys have the most problems. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> we do. If it's not fungus, and Texas A&M just put out a, a picture. They've been doing this recently. I don't know if you've been following. I'll, I see it. I saw but they, it. They're like, what is this? And it's a, just a picture of like, hey, what are we looking at? And yeah. I think it's pretty cool. But um, it was chinch bugs. So, you know, if you're not seeing any fungus or it's not that time of year or the condition, not time of year, the conditions that would be favorable for fungus and you can eliminate fertility out of the problem, what types of or late summer early fall, what could you be seeing in your turf as far as uh, insects go? So well, let's, let's say temperatures from 95 and above, which is typical for us in July, August, September. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I'm, I'm, if I'm diagnosing a lawn, the first thing I'm going to do is like it looks wilted with the little leaves are folding together and that's a sign of drop stress. I'm going to check for chinch bugs first. Um, I'm going to check for that. And that's only because that's on my way to the front door, mm -hmm. and the next one, the next one to the customer is let's let's see what your sprinkler system's doing, because that's probably if I had a if I had a nickel for every time a customer said, "Man, I'm watering," mm -hmm. and yes, I checked my sprinkler system, I would be rich. I'd be in the <laughs> Bahamas right now, not sitting on Sandy's couch. Uh, but the the the, the problem is wa usually water, and then if it's getting water and it looks wilted, then it's chinch bugs. And then, you know, you can, great leaf spot, you can have that throughout mm -hmm. the heat of the summer. Um, that's, the, the symptoms are very easy to detect. Uh, but those are the, the first things I'm looking for. Uh, I'm, and when I look at the sprinkler, I'm going to be making sure it's covering. Um, watch your sprinkler come on. I mean, even my own mm -hmm. lawn. I mean, when I put out my mm -hmm. rye on Saturday, I, I turned my sprinkler on and I was like, oh, crap. Yep. You know, it's almost a couple months ago when I checked it, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh no. Yeah, you I know? mean, you know, you knock it a little bit with yeah. the mower, or something happens, mm -hmm. and it goes a little bit off, or you know, there's just, you, you always have to just, and, and Mike Bowling, another admin, says all the time, just walk around, walk your property, yeah, and just make sure that you're keeping an eye on everything that's going on. Um, you know, I, I was doing that because I have to water my parkway strip by hand, because I have drip lines there, so... Not going to get any ride germination with a drip line, mm -hmm. so I have to water it by hand. And so now I'm taking a look and seeing what else is going on in the front yard. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's super important. Um, how uh, so? Chinch bugs are very very small. So, how can you check? You know, if some people might say, you know, check to see if you have chinch bugs. Well, how am I going to check that? Okay. So I'm gonna look for areas around the sidewalks and driveways first, and then I'm gonna to go to the edge of the problem. And then all you do with chinch bugs is take the grass and pull it down to where you can see dirt and hold it. And you're gonna to have to do this in several locations in the yard because one, one's not enough. And so you're just gonna pull it apart and wait like 10 to 15 seconds. If you get to 15 seconds, you don't see anything, they're not there, but you have to dig. And sometimes they can, mm -hmm. they can be tricky in areas that, that look like obvious chinch bugs and you're looking around and, you're, and you don't see them, keep looking, be very diligent because then you, you will see them. It's a little black, as you, like you said, I have to get my readers out. I don't know where they are. I guess they're in my pocket. I get my readers out and I'm looking and then it'll be obvious. Then you'll start all of a sudden, you'll see one and then all of a sudden they're just like, you yeah. disturb them a little bit and then you'll see them going. But it's a little tiny bug with a little white speck on the back of their wing and what they do is they, when they're feeding on the plant, they inject themselves into the plant and they block the uptake of water. Mm. So they just dis they disrupt the flow them, and so the water can't flow up. And, and that's why you're seeing the wilted. And that's why it's wilted. Mm. And so they're very easy easy to control. You can apply something as, as cheap as like bifenthrin. You plan on one to two applications. If you're a homeowner, you might as well do two. Yeah. Because those the chinch bugs um, reproduce very fast, and so you will knock out whatever's there. But the eggs, the, you know, they if they they could hatch in ten days from now, 
and then you're going to have another crop of chinch bugs. And so if you're a homeowner and you just, just plan on doing it twice. So that's interesting because they're so small, so spreading the grass out, getting waiting, getting in there, being patient, mm -hmm. that's a little bit easier than checking for grubs, yeah. which we're seeing quite a bit now. So grubs, how would you inspect for drugs and uh, grubs and what would you use to treat them? Well, right now, I, yeah, you're right. We are seeing a lot of grub damage. One of my technicians on the way here sent me a picture of grubs, and I was like, oh, here we go. Yep. And I, the first question I asked him was like, well, did we put prevention down, which we apply metoclopril, a uh, great product for grub control. Um, and he's like, no, we didn't. They didn't. It's not part of their program. And so I was like, okay. So what you do is it's, it's going to be a dead area, and you, you're going to grab the grass, and you're gonna pull it back. And it and literally it's gonna, just pulls up. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're gonna be grabbing it and you're like, all right, you're ready for some resistance and you're just gonna be like, whoa. Yeah. And there's gonna be no resistance there. And so with grubs, you know, I recommend grub prevention and, and here's why. One, you don't want to eat in your guard. Um, and two, in order for you to check for grubs, and let's say you're gonna do an IPM product or, or a procedure and you, you only treat when you see them. Well, you have a grub problem when you have five grubs in a one cubic foot hole. To check for grubs in your yard, you would have to dig these holes all over your yard. And by the time you got doing, done doing that, your, your yard, well, you can imagine what your yard would look like. So put out a grub prevention, uh, a celeprin lasts the longest. So if you're a homeowner and you still want to do it once a year, a celeprin, get a celeprin out early in the, in the summer and you, you should be fine. Uh, Most people use grub X. So mm -hmm. the and the clover, yeah. But you have to be careful because now that you're seeing grubs and you're seeing grub damage, those products don't work. Right. So be careful that you see a grub product, like in Midclopery, Scott's Grub X, you see it and you're like, oh, this will treat my grubs. It's not going to do anything. So that's your prevention. What are you using to kill them? So curative, there's there's more than we we use few products. We use either arena or dialox. I use Arena when BWI is out of Dialox. <laughs> um, so I use Dialox um, and expect for it to take a couple weeks uh, for, for it to work. Uh, but that's the product that we use. But you're right, putting out a, um, a Midicloprid or a Celeprin or something like that, mm -hmm. it's not going to be your curative uh, grub product that you'd want to use. Now I think the hard part about grubs is you're seeing the damage now. So now we're in mid to late September. Mm -hmm. And... How is my lawn going to come back? It's not going to come back this year. Not in Dallas Fort Worth. Right. Now you might in you know if we're in West Palm Beach, Florida, where it grows all year. Yeah, you could just put like I would recommend putting like eighteen twenty four or some type of root stimulator for that has some phosphorus in it to get those runners moving a little bit. Um, that would go a long way. That's what I would do. Um, but that air is just going to have to recover. Now it may warrant putting out sod. Yeah. And it is what it is. If you, if you don't want grubs, get out to grub prevention. Mm -hmm. the, the customers that, that have, have, like this customer that, that has grubs now, I guarantee they'll be on a grub prevention program mm -hmm. until the, in the whole lifetime of their customer, mm -hmm. and they'll never skip it. They don't want that um, again. Yeah, so whenever, whenever you take care of your yard, you open yourself up for grubs. Mm -hmm. So if you're watering and you're fertilizing, you're going to get grubs because grubs like soft soil. They want to eat good, so they want to. If you're taking care of you got green, lush grass, yeah. they want that good grass. If your yard, if you're not watering your yard, and it, it looks terrible, don't worry, you're not gonna have grubs. <laughs> Isn't worry. it funny how that works? You have yeah. less problems when you don't do anything yeah. to your yard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not gonna do anything. I won't yeah. have any problems. If you want to have a hippie yard, <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong against hippies. But I'm just, you know what I mean. Yep. You don't have to worry about grubs. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Titch bugs, grubs, army worms? Yeah, worms. army worms, now's the time. Uh, some years are worse than others. Uh, a couple years ago, I don't know if people remember, in the Dallas Fort mm -hmm. Worth area, it wasn't last year, I think it was the year before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a wave of army worms that just devastated the, like, the, our whole area. Michael Vargas, another admin, sent a picture, it was two years ago, that he, he had army worms. He put out something to kill him, his neighbors didn't, and Somebody survived. Yeah, they're easy to control, 
um, uh, two ways. One, post emergent, post emergent, post curative insecticide. Any service insects will work on them. They're easy. Like bifen, they're going to work. Demand, um, fill in the blank insecticide is going to work fine. But expect to see army worms like conditions like are now. Like we just went through a very hot summer. The yards are really stressed out. Sometime in September, early October, you're going to get a weather front that comes through with a lot of rain, three or four days of rain in a row, that's what's gonna set them off. And it's gonna set them off in the golf course, golf course communities first. I don't know why, <laughs> but a golf course communities get them the worst. It's crazy, it just, it happens every September. Every September I've been here, it's just like, okay, here's three or four straight days of rain and cool weather, and then we're back in the high 80s, mm -hmm. like we're gonna be this weekend. Yeah. It's just, it's the weather here is, it's, Unpredictable, but some of it is very predictable. Yeah. You just know that that's going to yeah. happen. And two years ago, it was also the September and October where we had like 18 inches of rain in September. So mm -hmm. that was my, my in laws were visiting, so I remember that really well. But it was, I mean, causing havoc up for everybody. Yeah. We had during, the, for, for so two years ago, we pulled all our trucks off of. Uh, doing the regular applications and they all did nothing but service insect control army worms for an entire month. Wow. That's how bad it was. Yeah. And that was me included. So I was <laughs> yeah. out there, yeah. I was yeah. out there spraying, yeah. You know it's bad when, when the boss yeah. has to get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess web worms would probably be in the same category. Yeah, they're not a huge problem okay. in this area. But do you go further south down in Houston and that sort of area, then they're they're a bigger problem. Those are probably the main ones that you would see. Mm -hmm. those, those those three army worms, ginger bugs, and uh, and grubs. Yep. Only one of them you can prevent. Yeah. The grubs. Well, you, actually, you can prevent uh, the army worms with a celeprin. Oh. Okay. If you get it out, uh, yeah, it's a long. There's a long residual, so if you want to prevent army worms, a celeprin will will work. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Anything that we didn't cover. No, I, I can't think of. Yeah, I mean, we. I mean, we could sit here for. I know. You know, we we'll have to break out the twelve pack or something. I we know. could sit here and talk about lawn. That for, sounds like a good time <laughs> to me. Yeah. Um, so okay, so let's talk about your YouTube. You know, you one thing that um, you know I like about your YouTube videos. Um, well, first of all, your channel is Ugly Weeds Texas. So you'll search Ugly Weeds Texas. You'll uh, you'll come up on my channel. And Very I, cool sunglasses. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I like about it is it's short and it's it's to the point. You know, sometimes we get these um, YouTube videos that are 15, 20 minutes long, and here I am doing an hour interview, but it's 15, 20 minutes long and there's this big production and all of these different things that are going on, and you're kind of just like, here's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know it's a five minute thing about drainage or mm -hmm. about you know you're, you're going to be talking about different herbicides. So, um, you know how um, how'd you get into that and what uh, what are you looking to? I, I, I stumbled into it. I, I I just was my wife and I were traveling and I discovered like lawn care on on YouTube like just by watching stuff and. Um, some of my favorites are, are, of course, Matt Martin and John Perry and, um, let's see, the Lawn Care Nut, Alan Hain, um, Jake the Lawn Kid, all the, all the, you know, all Absolutely. those guys. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. So I started kind of just playing with it and uh, just shooting videos from just behind, being behind the phone. And then um, my wife started filming me and, and stuff. And it's been really fun. And, and um, I really enjoy making the videos because... I want I wanted to make a channel that was a before and after channel. Mm -hmm. Like I want to show like this is for example I don't know uh, brown patch. This is what we did. This is what it will look like in well, the like future. The, the take all root rot. The take all root rot, right? And I think that that's what gets lost a lot of times with a lot of the YouTubers is that they do the before. Hey, I'm gonna throw these four products down and it's gonna be great, and then you don't see what happened, mm -hmm. and you're like, well. Yeah. Was it great? Because now you just promoted a product for no reason. Yeah. And that's what I think um, I get the most out of watching your videos is that it's you do get those before and afters. And I think that I, you know the voiceovers that you do, I mean, there's there's some production involved. In yeah. It. 
So I, I think you do a really good job with that. I hope it continues to grow for Yeah, you. thank you. It's, it's really fun. Yeah, and even if I, my subscribers don't grow at all, it's still just fun. Yeah, that's that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, this goes on our Facebook page. I'm not <laughs> yeah. doing this for mm -hmm. any other reason than to help people. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess that's all we have. So thanks again for coming all the way out here. And, um, you know, again, I posted a couple weeks ago, if anybody has any any other ideas, um, Zach Taylor said, hey, you know, why don't you talk to a pro applicator? So here's an experienced pro applicator. Um, so, you know, anybody has any ideas, anybody that we want to talk to, uh, any topics that they want covered in depth? Um, you know, this is probably close to an hour long, so it's not like it's something that you can't just ask your question and get an answer for. But, um, you know, Aaron comments on a lot of posts, a lot of questions that people have. So. Feel free to reach out to him um, if you're looking for some help and looking for somebody in the uh, Burleson, North, North Fort Worth, Worth? Yeah, Tarrant County, yeah. Parker County, Johnson. Yep. Yeah. so, you know, any of those areas and you want him to come out and discuss some things, then, you know, reach out to Aaron directly. But, uh, you know, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. And, uh,